Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League Week 7 of the 2015 season. I am your caster for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst. Thank you for tuning in. I believe we're going to have a pretty competitive match this game, so it should be fun one to watch. Uh, it is going to be between, on the blue side, uh, Team Twitch. Uh, Twitch, of course, an infamous streaming company. Um, not the one I am necessarily using for this stream, because I'm horribly biased against them. <laughs> um, no, I actually... Um, not really using YouTube for any particular reason, um, but it makes for funny commentary whenever I cast Twitch, so I'm glad. Uh, but they're obviously a great site. I'm subscribed to people on Twitch. Great site for streaming there, and most importantly, Team Twitch is going to be playing for Child's Play. Child's Play is a charity uh, that brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers uh, the joy of gaming and a joy that we are all familiar with. Um, because when you've been through a traumatic experience like that, you know, it's really hard to get back to just being a kid again. Um, so, it's a great uh, charity that tries to get kids back in the right frame of mind for their age and be able to relax and enjoy themselves again. Uh, and they are going to be playing against, on the red side, uh, EY's Epic Yordles. EY, of course, one of the big four audit companies in the entire world. Uh, <laughs> they provide, like, legal consulting and advisory services. And they are playing for College for Every Student. Um, that is a group that tries to help underprivileged uh, and underserved students uh, actually get to and through college. Um, they're currently working in 27 states and, notably, Ireland. Always my favorite part to know about that. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the pick bands of this game. We do have, for the blue side, uh, Wukong, LeBlanc, and Varus coming out as the bands. Um, let me check my notes here very briefly. Um, I'm not seeing, from my uh, scouting at least, too much uh, Varus play um, from this ADC on the uh, EY team. But that could just be some sort of uh, counter pick that they are trying to get out if they wanted to go Sivir, I suppose. I'm not really sure. Uh, that Varus is necessarily a counter pick to Sivir, but maybe that's something uh, they didn't want to be up against, hadn't practiced against. Um, getting that out of the way, of course, LeBlanc, very standard band nowadays. And the band's coming out for the red side, Janna, TF, and Vi. Um, again, not the exact bands I was seeing from my scouting, but my scouting might be a bit outdated. <laughs> I did a whole bunch of scouting early on, so um, I might have to update this this week uh, to try and get some more recent picks in here. Of course, Vi and Janna, just very strong right now, champions, all around good picks. Um, and first picks uh, coming out for both sides here, gonna actually be picking into a Morgana with that Thresh. Um, so either fairly confident play um, from this uh, Thresh player on the red side, or we could see a possible lane swap coming in. Of course, with uh, the Corky needing to ramp up uh, to actually getting that Triforce completed and the amazing amount of lane bullying that Sivir brings uh, definitely wouldn't put it past uh, this red team to try and do an invade especially since it is EY <laughs> uh, they are pretty known for some early game shenanigans trying to get deep in that jungle throw down some vision um, this could be a similar game where they try and get that early game vision see what's coming out uh, as far as the lanes for this blue side and initiate a good swap uh, make sure Corky has that free farm to ramp up uh, possibly even get some pressure on a top laner who doesn't see it coming with that thrush uh, but we will see once we get into the game here it's gonna be interesting to watch how things develop most notably uh, from my mind though as we do see the Vladimir locked in for the mid lane we're gonna have to talk about that um, most notably from uh, my scan, what we do see here is that Malphite coming out into this top lane for the blue side here. Uh, by far the number one comfort pick uh, for Bash, who uh, as far as um, just taking uh, solo queue ranks for what you will, <laughs> um, is sort of the target for this team as far as the red side is concerned. Uh, he's a little bit of an outlier. 
Uh, so they might be wanting to uh, focus him. I was actually expecting a few target bans coming out against him, particularly at least that Malphite, uh, to try and get him on something he's a little less comfortable playing against. But perhaps uh, they, the red side did feel confident uh, in their NAR play, as NAR is locked in here. And they're going to try and just create as much pressure on that Malphite as possible to shove him into the lane, uh, force him to try and farm under turret early, which Malphite... I don't know if you've ever played Malphite. Malphite cannot do that. <laughs> um, so especially uh, since Malphite just naturally is so mana hungry early, going to be very tough lane there. And uh, a disadvantage, or excuse me, a disincentive for this red side to go through with the lane swap after all being that NAR would be such a one-sided lane against that Malphite. So we're actually going to have a very interesting level 1 here, just seeing what the red side tries to do. Again, we do anticipate that they will be going in after some vision here, uh, so we'll have to wait and see um, what exactly they try and make of that. Overall, looking at the team compositions... Oh, before we even get to the team compositions, let me say, there's a Vladimir mid here. I didn't... I didn't take the proper time to say this. Let's let's look. That's, that's Vladimir in the mid lane. <laughs> um, certainly not unstandard uh, for Vladimir to go in the mid lane, um, or non-standard, I should say. Uh, very flexible champion there, um, Vladimir. Of course, uh, you see in the top lane quite a bit, given um, how he just naturally becomes tanky through his passive, giving him that extra HP for all the ability power and vice versa. Um, but yeah, uh, given uh, how you're going to have uh, J4 and Malphite here uh, to create a really good zone for a teamfight engagement, uh, that would actually be a very strong combination with the Vladimir, who's going to want to get in close, make sure he gets his ultimate down on a number of people, gets his AoE spells out to ramp up that ultimate damage as much as possible. So actually quite a wombo <laughs> coming out here. Of course, with the Sivir uh, locked in for the blue side, they're going to be able to get that positioning as well as possible. Uh, so these teamfight engagements should work out in their favor um, whenever that Sivir ultimate is up because they have such strong engage. I mean, Malphite and J4 uh, are two of the strongest engagers as far as teamfights are concerned in the game. So having both of them with a Sivir speed up looking for a pick um, or capitalizing off of a pick uh, that Morgana might be able to get uh, time and again from her Q should be a devastating setup for this blue side. Uh, as far as the red side is concerned, four team fights. we're obviously going to have the Pantheon coming out of the jungle here. Pantheon uh, seems to be, at least in my experience, a very uh, all-or-nothing champion. Pantheon seemed to either get ahead and go insane or fall behind and never really have too much of an impact. Uh, it's going to be largely decided, uh, in my mind, not even necessarily once you hit 6 and start to use that ultimate. Though, of course, using your ultimate uh, in the proper placement for the correct zoning uh, is, of course, going to be key here. Uh, what might de actually decide how effective those ults are uh, in the start of the mid-game uh, is going to be what kind of pantheon we see here. Are we going to see a, a very farm till 6 uh, clear time oriented pantheon or are we going to see a pantheon that tries to get involved in the lanes early and make uh, kills happen what kind of jungle item are we going to see are we going to see the chilling smite coming out or are we going to see uh, a more clearing smite to try and get that aoe stun clear those camps out faster uh, and just maybe poke around lanes throw down some extra vision uh, for his laners to make sure they're not falling too far behind without any ganks we shall see um how that works out and notably I do want to also say as we're loading into the game here uh, we do have Lux in the mid lane for the red side taking a teleport along with her flash so we're going to be seeing um, Lux possibly looking to trade early in this middle lane with Vladimir um, get some good maybe not necessarily in her favor even trades back and forth but be able to go for that early back uh, at a quick item, maybe even uh, just a tier 1 item and a Doran's Ring uh, to ramp up her lane viability here. And then teleport right back to lane and start uh, that pressure up again 
Uh, and with the uh, ghost in the mid lane here on this Vladimir, he's not going to be able to keep up with that pressure. Of course, being Vladimir, he should be able to sustain through that lane all right, especially if he's given a little bit of breathing room. But as far as the early game is concerned, Vladimir has not built that hex tech yet. Vladimir does not have any uh, true spell vamp uh, really built into him yet. So with that, um, as we see this visual bug here for a moment, <laughs> um, with that, he's not going to be able to contest a very early teleport. So we'll see uh, if Flux does decide to go for those early trades or if she uh, opts to rather uh, try and save that for a more timely B uh, and just use that as a general way to get back to lane quicker or even uh, an early roam into the bottom or top lane to try and set something up with her Q uh, snare or capitalize off of a thrush hook uh, if she decides to go in the bottom lane and make some early kills happen for her team but uh, we are loaded onto the rift as we do see this red side is completely grouped up we're gonna see likely an early invade again uh, like we were talking about earlier, to try and get that vision down. As it is going to be advantageous, it will be spun out. The hook is going to land on Morgana, and this is going to be the flash instantly burned. Great cue from Morgana. Actually, a flash from Lux coming out in reply, trying to get that cue onto Morgana to snare her down and make that a first blood, but not going to be able to do so. So in the end, actually... Trading summoners one for one there. Definitely red side getting the jump. But they did not even uh, throw down any vision aside from this single trinket ward here. So not too much accomplished from that. Um, could have backed off uh, and saved that Lux flash. But it looked like a little bit of miscommunication from the team there. Of whether or not they were going to go all in on that uh, for the first blood. Or just call it uh, and take that free flash. So in the end going to trade even there. Um, and it looks like they are going to be accepting the lanes as they are with that Gnar in the top lane here to try and fight out this Malphite. Gonna harass him down and use that ranged advantage to just chaw through that Malphite. Uh, chew through that Malphite shield, I should say. <laughs> um, it looks like we're gonna see both junglers starting here in the bottom uh, side of the map here. As we see some good guy leashes coming out. From both teams. Always nice to see people who actually leash for their genders. <laughs> um, and so far it looks like we're going to see a little bit more aggressive Vladimir play uh, in this middle lane here. Stepping forward early to try and get that harass on Lux, which is certainly what you want to do. Another great hook onto this Morgana, who does miss the follow-up Q, uh, but you're going to have to... Uh, be a lot more careful with Morgana early. I know uh, during the champion select I did mention that uh, it's a bit of a counter pick with that black shield but if you don't have that black shield up as we actually see a s uh, stolen red camp here gonna be spotted out eventually but Lux is gonna be enough with that Q to fend him off. So actually great invade there. Uh, let's hop back really quickly just to see what happened there because it looks like there was a bit of a scuffle here just went straight through the bottom lane after getting uh, the Gromp and so low knowing that that old or that a uh, smite was already down just for that health sustain you're gonna walk right in and take it now that <laughs> is some confident Pantheon play right there uh, I guess that answers the early questions of what kind of Pantheon this is gonna be is this one that's gonna be in your face trying to get uh, your laners ahead and it looks like the answer is going to be yes, just by proxy even, of that counter jungling. Going to put this J4 so far behind without that red buff. Uh, especially just the experience too from that, uh, the largest minion of the red buff camp is going to put J4 so far behind, uh, who is unquestionably a ganking champion. It's not really a question of style uh, as much as it is with Pantheon. So to actually see this J4 uh, inhibited like that, gonna be putting his team way far behind so great choice by the pantheon there and uh good coordination by the blue team to try and react as best they could but unfortunately vladimir not bringing in any real cc in that middle lane not really to catch him out even though he did uh physically run into him <laughs> in that bush and uh air quotes catch him out 
You see good har harassing trades coming in from both sides in that mid lane. Um, not quite as extensive as it could be. Fantastic spell shield by that Sivir there. Just as soon as the Thresh Hook starts being channeled uh, to throw that spell shield out to make sure she doesn't die there. Uh, actually did miss quite a bit of that CS because of that pressure Corky is able to put on. Uh, spamming out those abilities, shoving that lane under turret. Already creating a 9 CS lead for himself in this early game. That hook actually is going to go wide there. Extra spell shield just to be safe. Looks like Corky actually just going aggressive onto that server there is going to get the better, better side of that trade regardless. And it looks like we are going to see a gank here in this middle lane. It is spotted out by, or it is not spotted out by Ward, and that is going to be the Q missing. And the Ward's coming out, so a little bit of waste of time for this Pantheon here in the mid lane, but uh, that is the uh, risk you take with the Pantheon ganks in the early game. It's just such short range for that stun, unless if there's good CC you're following up on, uh, which you can chain like a monster. <laughs> um, actually getting the initiating CC yourself is quite tricky so Lux definitely gonna be needing some help in that mid lane though she is getting quite low she still does have that teleport though so she might see her go back right now and get that quick teleport back to lane uh, looking to try and harass her out of it uh, is Vladimir but unfortunately not gonna be able to do so and we're gonna see Lux yes with a good item break Gonna pick up that uh, codex, gonna pick up that, those health pots and teleport right back to lane. Not miss almost any CS. Great play there by the Lux. And we're gonna start to see uh, that CS discrepancy get made up for in this middle lane here. As she will have this weave, wave in the middle lane to free farm while uh, Vladimir is back walking to these lanes right now. We see. The good black shield coming out of there, preventing any possible hook from coming out. As the server definitely was a little bit vulnerable there, but now that is both shields down. Oh, and the hook just a little short there. Not going to be able uh, to land on anybody, but good shot there. Very close. They had been just a little closer. That definitely would have been a great engagement for them with both of those shields down. And we see Nar continuing to zone out this Malphite, uh, who is... Now, 20 CS behind. A um, little bit of skirmishing here in the bottom lane. Thresh looking to step forward. Not going to be able to land the flay, though. But yeah, this top lane absolutely getting annihilated is Malphite. Um, he has not gone back yet, so he has not really missed any experience. But great spell shield there again by Sivir. But that is three people in this bottom lane. And that is the Lux Snare landing. And Lux actually not going to get the last 30 hit points of damage down. Great Lux combo, as per usual with the Lux players we see in this league, but unfortunately, just by sheer luck of timing there, going to be 30 damage short and not get the kill there. Will force the back, will get an advantage in this bottom lane to get some extra damage onto this turret here. Possibly uh, set something up with this Morgana, scare her away. From that CS, maybe try and get a little hook there. Not going to be coming out, but unfortunately for Lux, that is going to be a, overall a failed roam for her. Uh, despite how much that did help her bottom lane, she's going to be needing uh, to get that farm up. And with this ultimate coming out, good shield there from the Lux, and it will be enough. Lux is going to make it out with plenty of HP to spare with that timely shield. Um, but that will be a back coming out from this Lux with her teleport down. So this will be some free farm to extend that lead even further. Great pull by Morgana there to interrupt the recalls for this bottom side on the red team. So we see J4 actually getting his own red buff this time. Uh, but here comes Pantheon Sivir quite far out. Going to try and save that spell shield as long as she can. And does throw it out, but is going to be hooked, so that's going to be all she wrote. No, that's going to be a flash from Sivir, actually. And that will actually be plenty to get out of there. I thought there was still going to be some additional CC to come out uh, from that Pantheon, but I believe that actually was what was spell shielded. So great play from that Sivir there to hold that spell shield as long as possible. 
and wait to use it on some of the key CC, knowing that once you uh, have one uh, bit of CC blocked out by that spell shield, uh, there is only one uh, other uh, real CC coming out aside from that play, of course, uh, that will put you in a precarious situation. Um, and you can just go ahead and use your uh, flash to get out of that. So, Sever going to be making it out with her life there. It will cost her both her flash and her heal, uh, but she will be making it out to still keep this game at no deaths for either side right now. We see Malphite possibly looking for some assistance here. J4 thinking about it, gonna be taking the crab right now. Um, but definitely really pushed up is this Nar. So with that speed shrine now, yes, we do see the pings coming out now. Um, and this is warded, so Nar will be spotting this out and he is gonna just hop right away. Make sure he's nice and safe, doesn't give up any uh, silly uh, mistakes uh, in this top lane. Keep that lead going. Again, now almost 30 CS in the lead is that Nar in the top lane. Absolutely destroying that lane, showing what we were talking about earlier. As we actually see Vladimir coming in, he's gonna be ghosting in, and that is the CC thrown down onto this Pantheon, who's gonna be forced to try and trade back, but that will be the first blood onto Vladimir here, giving him a blue buff as well. Certainly going to be painful in that mid lane for this Lux now, who actually, as we, just as we say that Lux in the bottom lane picking up a kill to <laughs> uh, try and correct me, and she's going to be getting it off of a teleport here. Great. No, actually not going to be landing that Q, just going to be patient, waiting for Sivir to line herself up, backing herself into a corner there at that turret, and channeling that ultimate and getting the kill. Good use of the Lux... Uh, E to slow that down though, uh, zone that Sivir away, make her take that extra step back, get a little bit of damage down from that Corky again, um, and when the Morgana shield came up, uh, keeping a level head, relaxed, aim that ultimate, pull the trigger and get the kill, so all of a sudden this middle lane, not going to be swung as in heavily favor of that Vladimir as uh, this blue side would have liked here. Lux, of course. A little bit behind in CS overall because she has been roaming so much, but uh, we'll see if uh, that's going to be snowballing into something uncontrollable as this dragon looks to be going down here. It looks like it will be largely uncontested. Uh, good cue from Morgana, good attempt there, but not going to be enough. Vladimir going to take a couple short shots for trying to harass there. But with that blue buff on him, that extra cooldown reduction, going to be able to spell vamp right on up, especially now that he does have that revolver completed. Good dodge of the boomerang, but actually walked back into it. And with that brutalizer, the kite is going to be brutal, excuse me, for making such a horrible pun there. But um, actually going to choose to hop away from it. Isn't R not confident in himself uh, to try and trade with a Malphite that does have his ultimate up, so... Uh, studious play there from the Nara to try and commit too hard to that kite. And that actually will be the mid lane going down from this uh, blue buff Vladimir. Able to just melt through those waves. Actually here comes ultimate from Malphite and oh, oh, the last little bit of caster minions gonna put out the damage to finish off Nar there. And that will be a kill. Going over to this Malphite, a desperately needed kill in the top lane. Exactly what this blue team was looking for here. If Malphite can get that solo kill on Dinar, that's going to help him immensely catch back up in this lane and make up for that CS discrepancy. Actually missing the uh, ward spot there in the bush. <laughs> um, but no camps really up there. Lux having a little bit of trepidation about checking that out. Uh, and we'll poke around and make sure this red buff is in fact still up before returning back to her lane there. But yeah, definitely um, catching up, uh, making up for that CS discrepancy with that kill. Gonna have his frozen heart now completed his Malphite. Uh, and Vladimir actually wrapping around through the jungle looking to try and create a play in this bottom lane. The Morgana Q is gonna miss and actually the play is gonna miss as well. Vladimir throwing down the ultimate. And actually appears to be a man on an island right now. J4 coming in a little bit later. But there is three members here now, and with that Lux Shield, that's going to be quite a lot of damage coming out with the Lux Ultimate as well. And J4 going to have to run through the turret as quickly away as possible. And that will be a little bit of an overextension from this blue side, giving a kill back over to the red side for essentially nothing right now. 
The second death, or excuse me, the second kill onto that Lux. Lux, definitely not the person you want to see uh, with kills coming out right now. Because she will continue to, uh, if she can continue to demonstrate her proficiency with her Q ultimate combo here, uh, she'll continue to be a hassle. As we see Vladimir trying to go all in with this trade, actually going to miss the Q as Lux. As we see action breaking out in the top lane as well, and that looks like Malphi will not be able to to get the damage he needs out onto that Gnar. Um, but actually, good trade for the position he was in. As we see again, this uh, Vladimir going aggressive onto Lux. Will it be enough? No, the Lux Q, the cooldown coming off at the last second. Lux going to make it off with her life. As we see the top lane turret going down for this Gnar Pantheon combo. And that will be another kill and turret going over to this red side of the turrets. Now evened up. More, more critical turret taken by the blue side right now in that middle lane. Uh, as this pink ward is going to be spotted out. But that will be the gold advantage starting to slide in the favor of this red side team right now. Uh, overall about 2k, 2.5k lead uh, in gold right now. So they're definitely going to be making use out of those items. Especially onto the champions that have key item breaks here with that quirky uh, really wanting to get that Triforce actually opting to go for a pickaxe um, instead of continuing to rush through that Triforce perhaps felt he needed a little bit of more of that uh, damage in lane here but we're actually going to see the J4 going to flag and drag into the ultimate on Lux going to force the flash there with absolutely no hesitation definitely what you want to do when you see a J4 coming out of nowhere, um, throwing down that ultimate, catching you in the Cataclysm when you don't have an escape like Lux. Just got to burn that flash with no hesitation. Great sidestep there from Corky, and actually returning damage the whole time as well. Going to be trading heavily in favor of him. And oh no, we actually do see the poison taking that blue buff away from Lux though. Uh, Pantheon going to be ulting in. Going to be trying to save Lux. No, she will go down to the Vladimir ultimate, but that will be the kill actually being returned to this Gnar here. So overall, a favorable exchange for this red side, getting more people involved in that fight there. Um, and actually, the uh, Lux, or the blue buff being put onto Pantheon there keeps the blue buff on Pantheon as opposed to Vladimir. But hold on, we're going to see Lux caught out by that uh, hook. So let's actually look back. I do believe there was Vision already in this bush as we see some styling moves from J4. Yes, going to throw down, see that, walking forward to try and contest the ward. Should have seen the channel, but just didn't quite catch it out of her vision there. So that will be this Morgana going down here in the bottom lane. And with two deaths open right before this dragon spawning here in about 45 seconds, we're going to see a lot of wards coming out from this red side here. Uh, as we see Pantheon scoping out the jungle, looking to try and clear out any wards uh, in his vision here to get total domination of this pit for the next dragon spawn. And do remember, there is already one dragon on the side of this red team here. There is no dragon for the blue side right now. As Vladimir is gonna just be able to save that turret with nine hit points. Hero Vladimir keeping that global gold denied for a little bit longer. Uh, as we actually do see the bottom lane turret going down. As this blue side's grouping up around the dragon pit trying to get some vision back in their favor here. They know Pantheon's hanging around. Trying to contest this as much as possible, but with that speed trying expiring right now, that will be a large evening up of the playing field. With the blue side control of the general area right now, it looks like they're going to start off this dragon here. Pantheon, that's going to be the teleport coming out from this Gnar. Who does not have his rage bar filled up, but just the teleport's actually going to be plenty to zone them away. As we do see Vladimir ghosting in with the pool. Going to get a good ultimate on a number of people, but Lux actually sniping out that Morgana in the back. As J4 got the, more, uh, the kill as well, and that will be Gnar not going to even be going down as well. No, Gnar jumping away. No, will go down to the Malphite in the end. But that will be overall with this last kill a 5 for one in favor of this red side here. Absolutely chaotic team fight gonna result in the dragon as well. Let's look back one more time really quickly at that team fight. 
see if we can get a bit of a different angle on how that happened here. As we did see, Nar, again, no raid, no Meganar coming out. He did not have any rage built up. Pantheon throwing down that ultimate. Vladimir was hooked in, but then was put in a great position to pull, so they decided to go all in. But absolutely, 100 zeroed was that J4. A little bit of extra work being put down by that dragon there. And we just see one by one collapsing here. As Malphite, gonna be enough to pick up that Meganar again. With that last hook, great hook there, great shot, <laughs> using that uh, uh, terrain to Thresh's advantage to aim there. Gonna be getting the ace over to this red side, and talking about the gold lead earlier, now the gold lead has absolutely erupted in favor of this red side here. With this dragon going down as well, that is, again, the second dragon. <laughs> Thresh styling a little bit there on the last hit. Uh, that is the dragon going over to this blue side. That is their second dragon of the game. Giving them a little bit more of that pushing power, of course. But perhaps more critically, setting them up for a third dragon. Uh, which will be that bonus movement speed. To create a lot of pressure. Poor Morgana doing her best to try and keep those minions occupied away from the turret. But one hero caster minion went through. And actually was enough to get that turret down. Um, unfortunately, good play from Morgan, but unfortunately, uh, not going to be enough there to keep that turret alive. And again, we see Corky deep in the blue side jungle uh, to result in the ward vision we have here. We do have some deep wards placed out for this red side here, whereas the blue side just having a little bit around uh, the river here, trying to can from trying to contest contest excuse me that dragon. As we're actually going to see Pantheon ult in here. Uh, will it be enough though? We're gonna see Morgana not be able to land her ultimate and that will be Sivir absolutely blowing him up with this Pantheon. The kill advantage now. Great flash there by Morgana as soon as that hook comes out. Um, from Thresh thankfully sitting on that ward there. Gonna have a little bit more advanced notice so great play, great uh, map awareness there by the Morgana to see that channel coming out. Have that flash ready. And we're going to see Vladimir again trying to turn this around. Lux is quite low. With the flash, will that be enough? The shield is going to go down. And that will be enough to give a kill over to this Vladimir. Vladimir now 3-3. Three and three, Trying to trade with this Gnar who is just absolutely insatiable as the Meganar comes out. That will be a Thresh ultimate coming out as well. But there's the Malphite ultimate while they're trapped in the Cataclysm. And that is exactly what this blue side wanted to see. That Wombo combo coming out. From what we discussed earlier, is absolutely what they need to continue to create. They can turn this match around if they get great setups like that. Vladimir, going way too aggressive though, will go down to this. Uh, Corky actually gets a double kill before he goes down. Um, and actually is not going to go down even to the Morgana. That will be a 4 for nothing. Absolute. As soon as I give this blue side credit there. Absolute overcommittal there. Should have backed away from those kills. Uh, as soon as they got the kills for their side, they should have backed away and taken that and ran. Went back, bought some items, but trying to capitalize on that brief advantage they got. Gonna way overcommit there as we do see the blue buff going over to Lux. Oh, that's absolutely painful to see here. Just when you thought the tides were starting to turn around for the blue side, that they had the Wombo in mind, that they were ready for the pick potential of the J4, of the Malphite, of the Morgana. As soon as they get a capitalization off of that pick potential, they overextend immediately after while they're way too low, especially speaking particularly of the Vladimir who was way low and pulled in, draining his own health even further. Um, and eventually... Uh, pulling his team in there with him as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can appreciate that aggro Vladimir style. <laughs> but um, definitely a little too hard in this game. Especially when you're behind. When there is a uh, nearly 8k lead here for this red side. But hold on, wait for that. We're starting to see people get a little bit low. Luckily they are at the turret that does give you the passive shield. So they will have a little bit more... Uh, defendability here at this turret but with that corky poke coming out with that nar boomerang coming out with the 
constant threat of a Lux ultimate being channeled at any point in time. You gotta be careful here as this blue side, especially again, look at the side lanes. Both the top and bottom lane are pushing in red side's favor so they can sit here and uh, siege this all day. Get nothing but advantage here, make that CS be lost out, lose that pressure in those other lanes. Good choice by Corky there to Valkyrie away, seeing that Vladimir on the flank, not wanting to risk anything. Again, taking their time. They see even now, the minions in the top and bottom lane are still building. Thresh throwing out the hook, gonna go a little wide there. As Meganar comes out, actually does catch Vladimir with the hop, and that will be the pool delaying the inevitable for a little bit. Great Zodis there actually as well, as we do see Sivir going down first, then this Vladimir finally going down, followed by J4. Poor Morgana gonna be taken out as well, and that will be a four for nothing in favor of this red side. And now, oh, actually, Thrush gonna be going deep here onto this Malphite. Speaking of overextending a little bit, here comes Thrush, but tanky enough at this point uh, to survive that. As he is, again, 1 and 11. Absolute all star Thrush here. We can obviously look at the Pantheon. Uh, we can obviously look at the Corky who has no deaths, but let's take a moment and appreciate that kill participation there. If there's been a kill on the map, more often than not, Thresh has been involved in that. Absolutely great play there, and he's been very on point with those hooks, throwing those out, landing them like their targeted spell. Definitely showing a lot of proficiency on that champion, uh, and the relentless... Uh, counter jungling from this red side continues giving this blue side no respite here as <laughs> Morgana gets a little angry at that minion for uh, following her into the bush there gonna be clearing out that pink ward and that will be the dragon being called out by Pantheon again this would be the third dragon going over to the red side here I'm not sure uh, how capable of contesting this actually Vladimir just completely 1v1 by that Corky there Corky now 6-0-6, Vladimir just simply cannot contest that. Uh, even if he was able to get the pull out to dodge the, the first, or that finishing rocket from Corky, it's Corky, those rockets are going to be back up. You simply can't contest uh, a Corky as a Vladimir, especially when Corky is that much further ahead of you here. And we're going to see uh, this dragon uncontestable here. I mean, J4 might go for a hero flag and drag. Uh, but no, that actually is going to be some suppression coming out. He's going to go for it anyway once he got locked down. Possibly the right move there. Uh, given that with that lockdown, he was going to be... Actually, Malphite's caught out. Hold that thought. We're going to see Malphite going to be finished off by the Lux there. Another kill onto this Lux as Morgana actually panic queuing the wrong direction there. Um, but yeah, un uh, probably the right decision there once you realize you have that CC thrown down onto you as J4. You realize, okay, well, this is probably going to go poorly for me. Give my team a little bit of time to disengage, uh, distract them, possibly get a hero smite on that dragon. But unfortunately, it was not enough. We're going to see time full of teleport from Nar to keep that CS uh, from being wasted as it crashes into that top lane turret. And again, Corky looking to trade with Vladimir, but now he's got some backup this time. A little far away. Actually, Morgana gonna be missing that Q. Trying to step forward. Morgana chunked out so hard, though. They're trying the best they can. Actually gonna flash forward as Vladimir, who is now all in. But with the heal coming out from Corky, that will be enough to keep him alive. Actually, critically, that heal probably would not have uh, been alive without it. So, uh, confident play from the Vladimir there. But unfortunately, Corky just had the backup with him. And there's not really much you can do about a situation like that. Corky is barely not going to be dying to the red buff there. Um, as we see again, re more relentless counter jungling here. Coming out from this red side as the buffs are taken away here. The blue buff at least going over to this red side. And now with a 13k lead. 13.5 gold. Uh, excuse me. 13.5 thousand gold. Uh, in favor of this red side. Uh, there's, you got to start wondering exactly what you can try and do as this blue side here to try and contest uh, this situation. you got to do what they're doing right now. Of course, throwing down those wards, keeping their vision control up as much as they can within their jungle. And again, looking at the minimap here, they are investing pretty solidly in some ward control in their own jungle, which is what you absolutely have to do at this point. Um, and just try and look for those picks. Again, 
We have a J4 and a Malphite and a Morgana on this blue side. It's not like we can't see a trade here that happens. Oh, and gonna start it off with the crit. <laughs> Disgusting crit there from the Corky to start that engagement off and gonna be able to 1v1 Sivir. Nightmare Corky, 8 0 oh, 8. We talk about an early to mid game power spike for Corky, typically going with that Trinity Force. Uh, this is uh, Corky who's going to be power spiked all game. <laughs> uh, going to be forcing out the um, smite there. Actually, forcing out the flash as well onto Lux. So, critically, that flash is down. But in the meantime, this is a split push in the top lane. Blue side not really having the time to try and back in that bush and react to this. And that will actually be Pantheon going down, maybe. Maybe. No, Pantheon gonna actually be able to flash and get away here. We're focused on this Pantheon right now. Who actually turns it around in the end and gets that kill. Oh, let's watch that one more time to see what was happening in the background as that skirmish was unfolding. We were focused so heavily on the Pantheon. Try and watch what was happening elsewhere on that map here. So we see Quirky coming around here. I believe he's going to Valkyrie up as soon as he sees this. Actually, no, just going to waltz up, hang on to that Valkyrie and burn it. There it is to be able to kite that Malphite and land that uh, ulti shot there. And that will be oh, absolutely Nightmare Corky coming out here. Though, I mean, to be fair, let's let's not get overly focused on Nightmare Corky when there's a 7-1 Pantheon, when there's an 8-2 Lux. And yes, that will be the Surrender coming out. With the unanswered uh, split push in the top lane, so GG will be going over to the red side as that is the game going in favor of EY's Epic Yordles here. Oh, excuse me, forgot to hit the confirmation there. Um, so let's look at the stats breakdown for this game right now. As far as damage is concerned, Vladimir putting up intense numbers for how one side of this game uh, spiraled into becoming. Uh, actually outpacing everyone on the red side here for amount of damage dealt aside from Nightmare Corky <laughs> who was absolutely showing no fear getting in people's faces 1v1ing people multiple times um, but yeah so I mean great showing from the Vladimir there um, and overall like they certainly had the potential on this blue side we saw it in that mid game when they had that fight but they just got a little full of themselves there and tried to push through that fight as hard as they could, but they simply couldn't. They didn't have the HP to follow up on it, um, especially especially Vladimir, who while he did have spell vamp completed at that time, was so low. I mean, as they're kiting you, you're gonna be taking damage, so well, your spell vamp is gonna be essentially negated. So you're going to be at the same HP you are when you started off that fight. So. Just got a little over aggressive there, unfortunately. Uh, did this blue side, and from that point, it just spiraled out of control again. The 7 1 Pantheon, the 0 1 13 Thresh, the Nightmare Corky, the 8 2 Lux. Um, I mean, when once you get in a position like that, there's really not much you can do to try and come back, but certainly fought hard, did this blue team. Um, but in the end, it was not enough, and again, that will be the game going over to EY's Epic Yordles, uh, beating out this Twitch team on the blue side. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this game, please be sure to check out the After Hours Gaming League website, uh, where all these games will be posted. All the uh, schedules for this uh, league are posted up there as well, so if you want to follow your favorite team, feel free to visit that site, check them out, and... Uh, Feel free to stay tuned to this channel as well. I will be streaming all the games live that I will be casting every Sunday. All the videos will continue to be uploaded uh, right after the matches are completed. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope you uh, enjoyed this matchup. I'll see you guys later today.